This is the second section of chapter five on straight line graphs, and this section is on equations of straight lines. Now we already know from the previous section that we can write the, the gradient or work out the gradient of a, a line using this expression here by taking um, any pair of x and y coordinates. Now let's say we multiply both sides of this formula here by x2 minus x1. That will give us this m times by x2 minus x1 equals y2 minus y1. If I flip it around and replace y2 with y1 and replace y1 with y and do the same with x, just replace x2 with x1 and replace x1 with x, I will get this uh, formula here. And that will be y minus y1 equals m times by x minus x1. Now what this does is this gives us a way of finding the equation of a straight line. Notice what we've got in here is m, so I'll need to know what m is. And it has a coordinate x1, y1, x1, y1. And we can use this expression to write an equation of a line once we know its gradient and a point that it passes through. So I've just got that written here. We can use this to write or find the equation of a line if we know its gradient, m, and a point it passes through, c. Actually, that's wrong, isn't it? A point that it passes through will be x1, y1. Example six, find the equation of a line with gradient five that passes through the point three, two. So we're going to use this to help us do it. Y minus Y1 equals M, X minus X1. And it's just now a matter of substitution. So this is my X1, this is my Y1, and this will be my M. So let's substitute those in. And I will have Y minus Y1, two equals m5 times by x minus x1 which is 3. Now there's no reason why we can't leave our answer in this form. This is an equation of a line but often what we'll do from this point we'll write it in the form y equals mx plus c or ax plus by plus c equals 0. Now I'm going to do both. If, the, if you have a question and it doesn't say which form to leave it in this is fine. This is the equation of a line. So let's do y equals mx plus c form. So you would just do one or the other. Right, so if we do it the y equals mx plus c way, all we need to do is to add two to both sides and expand the brackets. So I'll have y equals 5x minus 3 plus 2 We'll expand the bracket so y equals 5x minus 15 plus 2 so we'll write it as y equals 5x minus 13 okay so that would be our y equals mx plus c way how about our ax plus by plus c equals 0 way well we'd start by expanding the brackets so you've got 5x minus 15 then we'll bring everything to one side um, so maybe I'll bring the y and the 2 over to the other side. So I have 5x minus y. Then I've already got the minus 15 there. Then I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So that'll be 5x minus y um, minus 13 equals 0. And remember, any multiple of this would be fine. So you would write your answer one way or the other. The question doesn't say anything. You can leave your answer like this. Example 7, find the equation of a line that passes through the points 5, 7 and 3, negative 1. Right, we're still going to be using the y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 form, but we need m. So we're going to use m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find the gradient first 
and then we can put the gradient in here along with one of these two coordinates. So if we do that, we'll have m equals, so this one will be my x2, y2, and this one my x1, y1. So that will be negative 1 minus 7 over 3 minus 5. So that give me negative 8 over, sorry, uh, yes, negative 8 over negative 2, which leaves 4. Now we can use this here. Now for x1, y1, I could use what I called x1, y1, or I can use this one. It doesn't matter. Any point that the line passes through, now I'm just going to use the 5, 7, because there's no negatives there. Maybe the work is going to be a tiny bit easier. So I'll have y minus 7, y1, equals m, which I've worked out as 4, x minus 5. So where I've got the 7 and the 5, I could have just as easily put negative 1 and 3. And maybe we might do that just to show you we get the same answer. So as I said before, we can leave it in this form, but we'll expand the brackets and simplify it. So we'll move the 7 across. So we've got 4x minus 20 plus 7. So y equals 4x minus 13. Now what happens if I put the other coordinate in? So this might be the other way that we do it. So if I chose y1 as negative 1, and my uh, x1 as 3. Do we still get the same answer? Let's have a look. So this becomes y plus 1 equals 4x minus 12. Take away 1 from both sides, y equals 4x minus 13. Exactly the same answer. So it doesn't matter which coordinate you pick, as long as it's a coordinate that the line passes through, and it passes through both of these. Now, if you left your answer in the form, uh, ax plus by plus c equals 0, you would have 4x minus y minus 13 equals 0. So you should now be able to do exercise 5c on pages 94 to 95 of the textbook. Example 8. The line y equals 3x minus 9 meets the x-axis at the point a. Find the equation of the line with gradient two thirds that passes through point A. Write your answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals zero, where A, B and C are integers. OK, now I don't need a sketch to do this question, but I am going to draw run to, so that I can just sort of visualize what's going on. So this is my line Y equals three X minus nine. because so it's got a gradient of three it meets the y-axis there at negative 9, and it meets the x-axis here at the point A. And what we need to do is to find the equation of this line that has a gradient two-thirds that also passes through A. So the value of m for this line is two-thirds. So the first thing I need to do is to find the coordinate or coordinates of A because once I've got a point that this line passes through and its gradient, then I can find the equation of the line. So let's find the coordinates of A. So the coordinates of A I can find, and it's where the, the first line, y equals 3x minus 9 crosses the x-axis. So that's where the value of y is 0. So I'll put 0 into y equals 3x minus 9 and solve that, we get 3x equals 9. So we get a value of x equal to 3. So that's where the line crosses the x-axis, or that's the coordinate 3, 0. So the line that I'm trying to find the equation of passes through the point 3, 0. So the line I'm trying to find passes through the point 3, 0. Right, so now I can use y minus y1 equals m 
x minus x1. So y minus my y1 is 0. It's the y coordinate of the point it passes through. m, well, I've been given that, that's 2 thirds. And then x minus my x is 3. Now, um, I could leave this in this form, but it says that I need to leave my answer in this form. So we'll expand the brackets and get rid of the zero. So I have two third x minus, and then two thirds times by three is going to be two. We'll move everything to one side, so we'll have two third x minus y minus two equals zero. Uh, these need to be integers, so we're going to times everything by 3, and then we'll get x minus 3y minus 6 equals 0. Or any multiple of this answer, so you could have a negative here and two pluses here instead. Example 9, the lines y equals 4x minus 7 and 2x plus 3y minus 21 equals 0 intersect at the point A. The point B has coordinates negative 2, 8. Find the equation of the line that passes through points A and B. Write your answers uh, or answer in this form where A, B and C are integers. Now I'm not going to do a diagram with this one, but what I am going to do is write down what I'm doing at each stage. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to find the intersection of the two lines so that's the point a so that's about solving simultaneously so um, i can use this and substitute it into here can you see you've already got y equals 4x minus 7 so let's substitute that into there so if we substitute y equals 4x minus 7 into 2x plus 3y minus 21 equals 0 we're going to get this 2x plus 3 times y that's 4x minus 7 minus 21 equals 0 that will give us 2x plus 12x minus 21 minus another 21 equals 0 that will give us 14x minus 42 equals 0. 14x equals 42, which gives us x equal to 3. So this is the x coordinate of where these two lines intersect. We need the y coordinate. So we'll put x equals 3 into this. OK, so x equals 3 is going to go into y equals 4 x so 4 times 3 minus 7 so that's y equals 12 minus 7 so we have y equals 5 so we can write down that the coordinate of a is 3 5 now what do we need to do uh, we've got another point here point b and we want to find the equation of the line that passes through a 3 5 and negative 2 8 so let's start by finding the gradient of this line. In other words, the gradient from A to B. So let me call this x1, y1, and this x2, y2. So y2 is 8 minus y1, which is 5. x2 is negative 8 minus, sorry, negative 2 minus x1 which is 3 so 8 minus 5 is 3 over negative 5 so we've got negative 3 fifths as the gradient of this line and now i can use y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 now i can pick any point that it passes through i'm going to pick the 3 5 because they're positive values but it might be better to use the negative 2, 8, just in case we've worked this out incorrectly. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the negative 2, 8 rather than this, just in case I've done, I've made a mistake 
and you might want to do that in the exam, use the information that's given so that you don't introduce further errors. OK, but the free five would be easier. It doesn't really matter. So y minus y1, 8 equals m, negative 3 fifths, times by x minus x1, so that's negative 2. So that will give us y minus 8 equals negative 3 fifths times by x plus 2. Now what we might want to do at this stage is because we know that a, b and c needs to be integers, let's turn everything into integers now by times everything by 5. Might be less fiddly. So if you times everything by 5, we're going to get 5y minus 40 equals negative 3 times by x plus 2. It makes the expanding brackets a bit easier. So I have 5y minus 40 equals negative 3x expanding the brackets minus 6. So now we just got to bring everything to one side. So I'll bring everything to the left. So 3x plus 5y. Then we've got negative 40. Then we're going to add 6. So that becomes negative 34 equals 0. So you should now be able to do exercise 5D on page 96.